Hello and welcome. I am the suit and tie dip and chew guy and this is the number 69, the 69th chew review and we will be taking a look at Bloodhound Plug. 69 chew reviews. Uh, actually, considering there was a fail on the Taylor's Pride and then it was redone, technically I have reviewed 68 this being the 68th chew between twist plug and loose leaf which is sort of impressive partly because or mostly because i when i started out with these didn't realize there were that many products in existence there is still one more uh and then three that i am still trying to source so all together take out the extra tailor's pride there are to the best of my knowledge 30 no, 30 sorry um 72 products on the u.s market so for this one now bloodhound plug a doggone good chew chewing tobacco that's what it says underneath the dog there one plug and it is denoted as thick cut up in this corner it's in a cellophane shrink wrap on the back you have thick cut bloodhound with the little saying again a doggone good chew chewing tobacco bloodhound is under this back seam so these have basically two seams at e a seam at either end and then one down the back personally i don't care for this uh, the, uh, uh, the majority of plugs come in this type of packaging uh the packaging is hard to deal with and can't be saved in the ideal world you would cut one end and be able to slide the plug up and down and out problem with that being is that it is wrapped in paper if you do not want to chew the paper that said, you can chew the paper if you want. Um, but if the plug is in good shape, if it has the right moisture level, it's all but impossible to get it slide up and down. So what I usually do is I end up removing the packaging altogether. And since these do not stick around with me for a long time, I put it in an empty pipe tobacco tin because they have gaskets. The bags, the bag products like Redman Plug and Levi Garrett Plug, way easier to deal with. But now this is an American Snuff Company product. American Snuff Company has multiple products that are in different packaging, like the Taylor's Pride and the Levi Garrett, both American Snuff Company products, are in bags. This and a couple others are in cellophane. Same goes with Pinkerton. The Redman plug is in a bag basically everything else they have is in a cellophane wrap like this so you have the small american snuff company branding the fact that they are based out of memphis tennessee this product in particular is 59 percent u.s tobacco and 41 percent imported sale is only allowed in the united states i mean it's pretty pretty simple packaging they do have the barcode on the back there and a warning label because we have that because when the package is two inches by one inch we have to have at least two warning labels on that um the product seems in good shape it's not going to give as much play because it is actually thicker this is thicker yet sort of this way smaller than the last plug I did from American Stuff, which was the Taylor's Pride. Um, that one wasn't as thick this way, but its dimensions this way were slightly larger. I am guessing that this, and basically all plug, plug products, are about two ounces. Um, some may be like two and a quarter there may be one or two of the thicker ones from Pinkerton that are close to two and a half. So I'm gonna cut into this, keeping in mind that 
there is no real good way to do this. It's wrapped in a very dark, almost black piece of paper. And it's got your classic plug smell, um, which is sort of, they usually represent as a little darker than original loose leaf and the raisin aspect seems to be brought in a little bit. It's a darker smell with less raisins, let me put it that way. But really, besides being a finer cut, really they are, see this thing doesn't even want to slide out of this for me. And, and that's the problem with this packaging because then you gotta go and do this. Um, so plug, is put in a form. Uh, I don't know if the form, it, it's probably made out of wood. So what you're looking at here is a cut or a plug out of that form. So you have paper, black paper on all these sides right here, okay? And this would sit and be part of a longer formed piece probably boxed in by wood. They might use metal, I don't know. And then there's cuts made out of that long form. They sometimes call them cuts, they sometimes call them plugs. On the packaging, you usually do not see. Some of the Pinkerton products do have ounces, but usually it's one cut or one plug. Both mean the same thing, it's that. And that's why paper is wrapped around this way, but the ends are open. You can see the tobacco on the ends. Now this is finer cut loose leaf, basically, that's been formed. It's probably been put under some sort of pressure, which I am used to from pipe tobacco business because pipe tobaccos also come they, they have plug forms of them as well. It's basically a really old form of tobacco, and if it was in the right packaging, which is not this, it made sense because in the expansion, Western expansion in the 1800s, guys going out west, this was a convenient way to carry tobacco and keep it in good shape. Because of it being compressed, it's holding moisture that it wouldn't normally if it was just loose. Keep in mind also, until the nighttime campfire, flame was not easily accessible for a good portion of the 18th century, all right? There were matches for a good portion of the 18th century, but they were not the match, the safety matches we have today. So, you know, smoking really wasn't an option unless you were stopped somewhere with a fire or in a indoor location where the matches that were in circulation could be used. Okay, so I'm going to pull this paper off and I'll show you what that is. You, really, you can actually just chew the paper. I mean, I, I do it. I, I only take it off for these reviews, really, because half the time it's falling off. This one is not. And I do it for reviews just so you can see the product, basically. Uh, I, the, the paper is a, it's just plain, really dark brown. This one might actually be black. It's, it's, the paper doesn't even want to come all the way off. The product's in good shape. It's actually tacky. That is what you're looking at. Now, before they throw it into the form, some of it, I believe, is there. there's at least two batches that are treated differently, which is why you're getting darker and lighter spots. And then they're put into the form and then put under pressure. All right? So the darker spots are just a stronger or more more of uh, molasses concoction. That's where it's been cut. Those are the ends. 
All right. I'm going to pull it off because we're already at the 10-minute mark, and I haven't even got this in my mouth yet. I, I really sort of got to strike in videos down a little bit more. So... Back in a moment. And I'm back. So, this is what I do with these when they have the packaging like that. It's a pipe container. Pipe tobacco container, sorry. But they fit, like, perfectly. And the container has a gasket around it. Not that I keep this stuff around that long. This will be gone tomorrow. This stuff in the mouth is considerably... It's, it is a thicker plug, the thick cut. They're not exaggerating, it is. So basically, this is your standard plug. And I'm going into like general information for people that aren't used to plug. Um, there's only really one plug I can think of out of all the plugs I've done now that really stands out, like stands out. There's a couple, they all vary a little bit in flavor. The only one that really stood out as being like, wow, this is really different, was Cup, which is made by Pinkerton. And the reason it stood out is because I'm pretty darn sure they had Latakia tobacco in it. Uh, which is something I'm familiar with with pipe tobacco, but something I would have never thought would have been incorporated into something that you put in your mouth. But it, it was interesting. It wasn't bad. It, it just really caught me off guard. Otherwise, plugs are basically what this is. Uh, they are somewhere along the lines of original chew, like a, an original, like a red man. Sort of like that, flavor-wise. The raisin aspect is toned down a little bit, and you get an idea that like it's there may be dark fire tobacco involved. It's a finer cut, okay? Um, if you leave plug in your mouth too long, first you, first you have to chew it because it's formed, and you got to get into a like a workable clump. But it's finer stuff, and the only problem with that is once you leave it in for a certain amount of time, especially if it's too long, like you're busy and you sort of lose track of the time, it will start getting very soft in the mouth. People are like, oh, well, that's a good thing. Yes, but when it's cut this fine, we're smaller pieces, and it gets soft in the mouth, Really, you get left with a deal where you start getting floaters, if you can picture that. So, it's going to have two levels of nicotine, although not quite to the extent of some of the twists. I do sometimes get a little bit of a mouthfeel with plug, so I feel like maybe it's because it's under pressure and whatnot, there may be more accessible nicotine in it, slightly. Nowhere near the mouthfeel of some of the twists that I've had. But there, there's something even with this right now. So, it's good. I like it. I always use these. I, I, I don't think there's been... I, basically, I use all chew. Um, which is why I was getting a little frazzled for a while there when I had the pound bags of stokers going one after another. This stuff will, uh, now I'm not actively chewing it right now, really, nor do I so much, but once I rotate it, the, the stuff spits black. I mean, it's pretty, and it does juice. Just don't want to leave it in too long. When it starts feeling really soft, like almost like slippery soft, and you'll know because you'll start getting pieces coming over your molar, it's time to get it out because if you leave it in too long, it I, it can actually become a mess trying to get it out of your mouth. So this one is good. 
I'm going to swallow that. <laughs> if you saw my eyes light up for a second there, I don't know if they did, but I almost freaking took it down. Um, it, it's your standard plug. Uh, there's nothing really too far out. I, I feel like I'm at a loss here as to explain this because I don't think enough people are familiar with plug in general. This is pretty standard. It is cut thicker. It is cut fairly fine, but it's the pretty standard plug flavor. All right. Spits good, juices up well. Seems like there may be some nicotine going on there, you know. Um, but you know, it, it's pretty run of the mill. I mean, it came in great condition. I will say the the, the Saran wrappers. The product usually stays in good shape in them, considering there's light getting to it. That's not the problem. It's dealing with the product after you've opened it. That That's the drawback. But American Snuff Company with this product is by no means at fault. It's pretty much an industry standard for whatever reason. So this one... I'll use the rest of this tomorrow. It'll be it'll be gone. Uh, I usually get about five chews out of a thick cut. Uh, I guess I could spin it. the The old school way of using plug is smaller pieces, like smaller amounts in the mouth, uh, and less spitting. Somehow, mind you, I'm not old school about plug, so I don't know how you'd go about doing that, but. Again, smaller pieces because this was predated in most areas, dip, obviously. So, Bloodhound from American Snuff Company. It's still out there. It's been out there a long time, and it's still out there. If you look, it's a pretty good plug. It's your standard, your standard plug flavor and cut. Um, moisture level was good. So all good by me. I am the suit and tie dip and chew guy. To that guy that wanted me to shout him out, I've just forgotten your name, but I'll get you in the next one. I do hope you all are well, the rest of you. Take care of yourselves, and God bless.